Welcome to the third tutorial on how to use Wrangler. What we're going to cover in this tutorial is the remainder of the structural refactorings that are available in Wrangler. These we'll see in the refactoring menu in the first block. So in particular we'll cover introducing and inlining a new variable, we'll cover generalizing a function definition, after extracting that definition um, We'll also look at how you can fold an expression against a function, that is, introduce applications of a function, and unfold, so that's inlining, the reverse of folding. OK, let's get started. Before we do that, let's just look at the example program we've got here. It's a module, we're doing single module refactorings, though of course these do apply over multiple modules. It's a module called Ping Pong, we start two processes, which are registered as A and B, and the bodies of those are, that are loops which ping-pong messages between the two. So here we see the body of loop A, and here we see the body of loop B. You can see that they're similar, um, they, they, they're a loop, and inside loop B, we, um, depending on the message that we receive, we either um, immediately loop and then stop, or we, we uh, output a pong to the terminal, sleep for a while, and then send a message to A. Similar things happen within A. So we're batting messages backwards and forwards between these two processes. However, the application is not, is not crucial. Right, let's get started. Let's, um, we have a calculation here of n minus 1. Suppose that we want to introduce a variable which will hold that calculation. We go to the refactoring menu, we choose introduce new variable, and we are asked for a new variable name. Let's call it steps. For want of a better name. We introduce that, and we are asked, as always, we are asked whether we want to preview, commit, or cancel the changes to be performed. And let's say we want to commit the changes. And what you see is that we now have a variable steps which is assigned the value n minus 1 and then we use that value in the message that's sent to process A. Now what we've done here is introduce a, a new variable. We could, to, to get rid of that change, we could ask and call the undo operation, but let's instead go to the refactoring menu and choose to inline a variable. Because we have our cursor on on a variable, we go immediately to the refactoring and let's say that we want to commit. And you can see the effect here is that every occurrence of steps, in fact we only had one, has been replaced by n minus 1. So what in fact we've got here is we've gone back to the position we were at before we introduced the variable. So those are the two refactorings, introduce new variable and inline variable. What I'd like to do next is to show you how we can extract a function. And this is one of the, the most popular refactorings, how we can extract a function from an existing sequence of um, Erlang expressions. So let's extract, let's select a sequence of expressions like this. Um, so this is the main part of the, um, the body of this, this clause in the receive statement, um, the main part of the, the function before we recursively loop. And let's suppose we want to turn that into a function. We select it and then we go to the refactoring menu and we say we select function extraction. We're prompted for a new function name, so let's call it um, process. We hit that, we're asked to make a choice. We, if we choose to commit, what we see now is that those three statements have been replaced by a call to a new function called process, and that new function is defined here. Now what you can also see in this function is that the, the expression we selected contained some 
variables that were not, not bound within that sequence of expressions, so they become parameters for this function. Here they are, message and n. Now, let's just have a look. We've got this function. What it does is it outputs a, um, a statement, it sleeps for a while, and then it sends a message. That looks very much like what we've got in the body of loop A. But perhaps you can see that um, the messages are different. Here we have a Pong message. In loop A we have a ping message. Here we send a message in the end to process A, whereas in uh, loop A we send a message to process B. Now what we can do is transform our function process to take some extra arguments so that we pass in the message and the process to which the message, uh, a final message is to be sent. So let's do that now. We select a, an arbitrary sub-expression, here it happens to be a string, and we can then choose to generalize the function definition over that. So let's select generalize function definition. Let's say the, the, we're asked for a new parameter name, let's say that's a string, and we're asked to commit the change. And what we see now is we've got a new definition of um, process with three arguments. And the first argument is, is um, the new argument is indeed the string. And you can see we've also been introduced a variant of this. The two, the two argument process function still remains, and that's by taking our three argument function and calling Pong in that, um, str is that string argument. Okay, so we've made that one generalization. The reason this is colored blue is because it's not called anywhere in the program. Now finally what we want to do is generalize over the destination of this closing message. So we select the, the, uh, the atom A, let's generalize on that, and now let's call this dest, or destination and let's commit that change and what we see now is that we have a four argument process which is parameterized on the string to be output the destination the destination of the message and a message and a counter inside um, so now perhaps you can see that the body here should be an instance of that function Let's, let's have a look at that. Let's select this function process, and we go to the refactoring menu, and we say fold expression against function. Let's select that. And we're asked whether we want to fold against the function clause pointed to by the cursor. We answer yes here. Um, the reason that we're asked this question is we may want to fold against a function that is in another module, and in which case we would have to in input the information about the function clause manually. But we'll select yes. And now what we see is that um, the, this, the place where that function is called is, is highlighted here. Um, and we're asked, um, we're given a choice of selections. We can answer with a small y or a small n to fold or not against that particular occurrence of the expression. Or we can use a large a capital Y or a capital N to fold against all or none of the remaining choices. In fact, we only have one choice here, so let's just say capital Y. And we're given a chance to preview um, or commit or cancel that choice, but let's say that we want to commit. And now we see that process is indeed called there, and the two arguments are ping and b, whereas further down, the two arguments are pong and a. So there we can see that what we have done is um, we've been able to fold against that definition. What we are able to do was look for occurrences of this process, occurrences of the, the body of this, this process function in our code, and fold against that. Now we can choose to reverse that if we wish. Let's reverse it perhaps in loop B. Let's select this and what we can say finally, this is the last of the refactorings we're going to look at here, is that we can unfold a function definition. So let's select that 
and let's uh, commit the changes there. And what you see here is that that occurrence of the function call is now replaced by what we um, by the code that was originally there. So the situation we have now is that loop A contains the call to the process function, loop B does not, um, and we've got the three variants of the process function, the two argument variant, the three argument variant, and the four argument variant. We include these, these two variants, process two and process three, for legacy reasons. It may be that if this function is exported, then there are callers to those functions in other modules and we want to make sure that that code doesn't fail. Of course, if you would prefer it to fail, you can delete those definitions. So just to summarize, what we have shown is that you can introduce a new variable and inline a variable by selecting a value for that variable um, and then uh, selecting the variable to be inlined. We can also do something like this at the function level by performing function extraction. Uh, once we've extracted a function, we're able to generalize a function if we wish. We're able to find occurrences of that function body in our code and replace those by a call to the function. And we're able to, to do the reverse, that is unfolding. So that concludes our survey of the, the structural refactorings in Wrangler. In future uh, podcasts, what we'll do is show you how some of these refactorings can be packaged together to detect and eliminate what are called co code clones, that is pieces of code that are, are similar to each other.